One. Hi there, and welcome to ECU Welcome, your online college induction. My name's Jack, and I work in the college's communications team. I'll be here throughout EC Welcome, bringing you live sessions with support teams from across the Edinburgh College. Over the course of this morning and tomorrow morning, we'll give you an overview of the college and introduce you to some of the key people across the organisation whose support you can call upon throughout your studies. To kick us off, our principal, Audrey Cumberford, is going to give you you an official welcome to our college and talk a little bit about the arrangements for the upcoming session 21-22. Sadly, Audrey can't be here with us in the studio today, but she has sent us this video. Well, hi, and thanks for taking the time to watch this short video. For those of you who don't already know me, my name is Audrey Cumberford and I'm the principal at Edinburgh College. And the first thing I would like to say is a big warm welcome uh, to Edinburgh College, Scotland's capital college. And I am absolutely delighted that you've taken the decision to study with us. And of course, a big part of coming to college is not simply to gain a qualification or experience or uh, new skills, but it's about you. It's about um, you finding out what you're good at, what you enjoy, where your talents lie. So I'm excited on your behalf at what's ahead over the next year. Now, by now, you should have enrolled and I hope that you've gained some initial access to the key systems that you will need to study with us at Edinburgh College. Now, it's really important that we know, particularly for new students who've never been here before, this, this can all seem very strange. It's really important that if you don't know what to do or you need some support, then you contact us because that support is available. And if you go to our EC Welcome site, it's welcome.edinburghcollege.ac.uk. So this is our EC, Edinburgh College. This is our EC Welcome, which is your online induction to Edinburgh College. And this is where you find out about the key aspects of the college, which will help you start your course and settle into college life as quickly as possible. Now, as you begin your courses, you will log into Moodle and Moodle is our online platform uh, which we use to make contact with students and where an awful lot of information and course material etc uh, will be. And that will happen over the next few weeks. Don't worry if you are thinking I don't know what Moodle is. This is the kind of introduction that you'll be getting over the coming days and the coming weeks. When you do log in to Moodle, you will see a message which will appear asking you to complete our student agreement. Now, that's important that you read this agreement properly and that you complete it because what you're doing is that you're recognising and committing to upholding the values of what being a student is at and, and should be like in, at Edinburgh College. Now, before you meet and hear from some of our key support teams across the college, I want to speak to you just a little bit about the arrangements for the start of this term. Now, for most of you, your course is going to begin online, as in remotely, and will be delivered through a system that we call Microsoft Teams. Some of you may be familiar with that already. And as I mentioned earlier, Moodle, and again, some of you may already be familiar with that. Now, the reason for this is that you may know that Scotland, uh, the government has announced that we have moved to what is called beyond level zero in response to the current COVID pandemic. Now, that means that most COVID-19 restrictions are no longer in place. However, colleges and universities across Scotland are still being urged to make sure that we do the right thing to make sure that our students, you and our staff, are kept as safe as we possibly can. So for now, what we're being asked to do is have a cautious approach to the start of term. Now, that means that we can not immediately have every single one of you and all of our staff back on our four campuses immediately. So that is not going to happen 
but will happen over a phased period of time. So our aim and our hope at the moment is to gradually build up the number of classes and the number of students who will be on campus, particularly after the October break. So between now and October, we are focusing very much on some of our priority groups of students that we know we have to get on campus for a variety of reasons. What's likely to happen then is that over the coming weeks and certainly beyond October, we will be looking to have as many of our students as possible back on campus, at least for some of the time, some of the week, so that you can experience what is undoubtedly a big part, an important part of being a student, which is being on campus, physically doing what you need to do, particularly with the practical subjects, meeting other students, making friends and meeting your lecturing staff and all of the other staff in a college that, that, that uh, support you and will be supporting you going forward. So we will keep you up to date uh, with this. We have a very active student association who communicate regularly with the student body as we do. And we do that through a variety of means. And again, how we communicate with you and where you need to go to to get up to date information will become clear over the coming days. Now, if you are learning and studying at home, and I suspect probably a bit nervous, if not a, a big bit nervous, um, and that you haven't done this before, please don't worry. Students across Scotland, particularly over the last 18 months, have, have been doing this. So you're not the first student and you probably won't be the last student. And I can probably guarantee that pretty much everyone, including the staff, have found this quite an unsettling and challenging and different time. So if you do feel like that, don't worry about it. And a big bit of advice I would give you is that if there are things that are worrying you that are out of your control, your personal control, then try not to worry about it. I know that's easy for me to say, but other people, other staff in the college and many other people will be worrying about these things and looking at how we can make things easier. So our lecturers and other staff in the college are here for you and they're here to help you every step of the way. So if you need help, as I said earlier, please don't be scared about asking and flagging up that you need to get some additional support or just if you want to chat through something because you're not very clear. Now, during today and tomorrow, you'll learn a lot more about Edinburgh College uh, before you start your courses, the majority of which are due to start in September. This will include, include what our campuses will look like and what support and opportunities are available for you. So next up this morning will be a health and safety video, which will give you an insight into some of the practices that we've had to put in place and the health and safety uh, protocols that we would like you to stick to if and when you're on the college campus. And this is important because it's about us making sure that we are making you as safe as you possibly can be, but it also means that you're doing what you can to make sure that your fellow students and staff that you're interacting with are also safe. So it's a it's a kind of two two way thing. Now, following the health and safety video, Nick Croft, who's in my senior management team, will be here to answer any questions you might have about the health and safety on the campuses. And you can ask your questions in the Q&A tab on the Teams live event. Later this morning, you will meet our student association, EXA, I mentioned them earlier, who will be here to tell you all about their plans for this year and how you can become involved in activities, groups and societies throughout the college year. Again, really important as well as studying is that you have fun and that you meet people uh, and, and take part in these things. Uh, they, they, I know I'm biased, but they really are a brilliant student association and we're very lucky to have them. So please engage with them quickly if you can. Tomorrow, some of our key support teams will be here to tell you all about the services which are available to help you throughout your time as a student. Now, these teams are hugely important and it's essential that you know there are lots and lots of people in support for you here at the college. That support is there for you whenever you're learning at home, 
and when you're attending at campus. So there's no difference. You are still absolutely entitled and encouraged to access that support. We've got teams working both on campus and online who are dedicated to helping you. So please reach out at any time if you need to. And lastly, I want to wish you the very best of luck for your studies this year. And I really hope you enjoy your time as an Edinburgh College student. And please make the most of the opportunity that that brings. Uh, and it should be fun. And I hope it will be an experience that you'll look back on with very fond memories. Uh, it'll, it'll be tough at times, I've got no doubt, in terms of the studying that you have to do. But thank you again for becoming a part of our Edinburgh College community. And I look forward to hearing uh, how you get on and hopefully potentially uh, meet at future graduations uh, if we can. So bye for now and thanks for taking the time to watch. That was our principal, Audrey Comerford there. You'll see and hear more from Audrey throughout the year. Now we've been joined by Nick Croft, who's part of the senior management team at Edinburgh College. Uh, Nick is here to answer questions on the health and safety protocols that we have on, the, on our campuses. Morning, Nick. Morning, Jack. Before we uh, begin answering questions, we've got a short video which shows you what you should expect if and when you're coming onto a college campus. So from the video there, you can see we've made some adaptations to our campuses and we have some rules in place to help keep you all safe. Now we're going to take some questions which you've been sending in, so thanks very much for that. Um, first question, Nick, is when will we be back on campus this year? My course starts online, but when will we be back on campus? It's a good question. Thanks, Jack. We've agreed at the college a list of priority groups of students who need to come onto campus to learn. So these are very technical, practical courses. Um, you'll be informed by your lecturers next week about whether you're coming onto campus. We're keen to get as many students back as possible, but safety is the key rule. The safety of our staff and students and visitors and anybody else who's coming on campus is our priority. So we've got a number of measures which the videos set out there. So we're going to try and get you back as quickly as possible. Your lecturer and staff will tell you next week, but we just have to be careful about the numbers. The virus hasn't gone away and we need these exemptions in place. Thanks, Nick. Um, the next question is, where would I find the student agreement? Um, I think that's been answered in, in the Q&A, but I'll answer it again as well. 
you when you log into Moodle, you'll see prompts over the next few weeks to complete the student agreement, so you'll, you'll see it there. Uh, next question, Nick. Will there be a requirement to be vaccinated, if possible, once we've been asked to return to campus? Thanks for your question. It's really relevant. Vaccinations are not mandatory. We can't force any staff or students or visitors to the campuses to be vaccinated, but the college, just like the government, is encouraging everybody to get vaccinated for the following reasons. It keeps you safe if you get the virus. You carry less of the virus around, so there's less risk of transferring it to others. And if you can keep the virus suppressed, it will keep the pressure off the health service. So whatever you've heard about vaccinations, please, they work, they're being effective. It's critical as many of our students get vaccinated as possible. We got some information through last week from the health service for our area, and they said that only one in four people aged 16 to 29 are being vaccinated. So please, if you're in that age group, get on your, your website get registered for vaccination as soon as possible. So it's not mandatory, but we do encourage it. OK, great, thanks. Um, next question is sort of back to the restrictions that were discussed in the video. Um, will there be restrictions on campus? Um, so we've seen that, but could you maybe talk us through the reasons for some of the restrictions that are in place? Yeah, so just to reiterate the, re uh, the restrictions and happy to take more questions on this. We need you when you come on campus social distance, try and keep the meat away from everybody else. In some places that's going to be really difficult. So that's why we ask you to wear a mask at all times when on campus, in offices, in the classroom, especially when walking around. We advise that the only time you take your mask off is when you're eating or drinking. And the reasons for that are if you wear a mask and you keep one meter, the risks of passing on the virus to others or you getting the virus is significantly reduced. All the evidence says that. So please focus on mask wearing and social distance. There are a few other things in the video I'd emphasize. Hand sanitizing is critical. All the evidence says virus transmission generally comes from picking it up on your hands and then touching your face. So please, the sanitizing stations around the campus, wash your hands as regularly as you can. We'll make sure that ventilation is in place in classrooms. That's another thing we're looking at. And we'll monitor CO2 levels in classrooms to make sure that ventilation is good. Finally, the other thing I say, very important, if you develop symptoms before you come onto campus and you need to self-isolate, do not come on campus. Formula lecturing staff will deal with that. If you're on campus and you get system symptoms, rather, a health and safety advisor will be called and procedures will be followed. We'd ask you to go home, get a test and self-isolate if you're positive. All of these things help us to keep you safe and each other safe. And once you leave the campus, your friends and family safe. Yeah, great. Thanks, Nick. Um, really comprehensive, so thank you. <laughs> um, will practical subjects be the first to come back on? Yeah, you know what we teach at college. There's some stuff we can't teach online. Um, and Audrey explained that really clearly. So things like catering, hair and beauty, construction, engineering, um, these are stuff is really difficult to teach online, so we're going to get those students in first. We'll have a look and we'll review at the October break how many students are on campus. And we'll look at the local vaccination rates and what the R number is and the amount of cases we've had at the college. We'll review that in October with a plan to try and get more students back, but it will depend on the factors I've just identified. So yeah, very much the practical classes back on campus. Okay. For this. Grand, thank you. Um, would the in-person classes be optional, e.g. could higher risk people uh, people decide to stay at home for longer um, and they might so a bit of a blend of actual teaching of classes, some online, some in. I suspect that might be a question for your lecturers, but uh, Nick, have you got anything to I think to you're right, Jack. The, Audrey said in a video, your key relationship in your college is with the teaching staff. So if you've got any concerns about coming on because of um, any conditions you may have or any other concerns, please talk that through with the lecturing and teaching staff. We'll try and accommodate that as much as possible. The relationship with them is key. Next week, you'll get opportunity to start discussing directly with the lecturing staff about these issues. So after COVID is phased out, is the aim of the college to completely eliminate remote education or will it integrate a hybrid approach? 
of some days on campus and some remote. That's a really interesting question, isn't it? Will this virus ever go away? I, I'm not an expert. I'm not an epidemiologist. I think that it's going to be around a long time. So we're going to have a lot of these um, these arrangements in place to mitigate the transfer of the virus. We're desperate to get students back on campus because we know that adds to the experience and adds to chances for success. So as I said, we will review that in October. After December, again, we'll review it. We'll go into semester two, 2022, and we'll look again to try and get more students back on campus. But I'd reiterate again, Jack, sole priority this year is the health and safety of the students and our staff and people on campus. So we're going to need to keep monitoring numbers. So we will make every attempt to get you back on, but you must accept, please, that we're trying to keep the health and safety of everybody at the forefront. So we have to limit numbers sometimes, but we want to move as quick as possible safely as possible to get some people back. Yes. Okay, cheers, Nick. Um, next question is, will this uh, video be recorded? Yes, it will. Um, all the sessions that are part of EC Welcome will be recorded, so you can watch them back at any time using the same link that you've accessed today, or we'll add them to our EC Welcome site, which is welcome.enbracollege.ac.uk. Next question. Uh, Again, for you, Nick, are actual flow tests provided on campus? Are they free or do students have to pay for them? They are definitely free. I've got one here. It was in the video. So we've got four campuses and at each reception area we have security staff and our reception staff. And we've got currently 9000 of these kits on campus ready for you to pick up. They're totally free. If you can't get onto campus to pick them up, you can order them via the government website. Again, totally free. They'll come in the post within a couple of days. You get seven test kits in each one, and we're advising that you test twice a week if you're coming off the campus. No point testing it. Um, they're very easy to use. A bit awkward the first time, but once you've been through it, it's a two, three minute thing to get the thing set up. And then we ask that you record the result on the government website, because then the college gets the information back about how many people are testing positive and negative. So very important we try and encourage testing as well as vaccination. It's a key bit of our approach. OK, um, when we do go back to campus, will it be for full days? Will it be for half days? Some still remote? Uh, will it be basically a bit of a blend, do you think? It's a great point, Jack, and thanks for your question. This you'll hear this expression a lot, blended learning. So a mixture of on campus, in person and online. And that's going to be the model for many of you going forward. Um, so um, it, we've learned a lot in the last year about how to teach successfully and engage students online through our Moodle and our team sites. Very important to get college email address so you can access your team site because that's where you'll communicate with your teaching staff about your course. So if you do that and you engage through those platforms, you'll have more chance of success of finishing and completing your course successfully. So uh, there'll be plenty of information about registering for IT and getting your email. There's plenty of information on the college website and the Students Association is helping with that as well. So um, I'd encourage you all to, you know, the next couple of weeks, get online, access your teams, because it will be a blended learning model for the foreseeable future. OK, thanks, Nick. Um, we've got a question from Bruno. Um, Will we be able to have a tour on campus before taking classes there, uh, particularly for new students? Thanks for your question, Bruno. There's already been some of that activity on campuses, um, particularly for the practical subjects, so people know where the camp uh, where their teaching rooms are, um, what the kind of arrangements are going to be when you're on campus. It will very much depend on your course. So for fear of repeating myself, next week is really important to engage with the lecturing and teaching staff because they'll talk through when you're on campus, when they'll meet you on campus and giving you tours on campus. OK, thanks, Nick. Um, if you're exempt from wearing a mask, do you have to wear one? No, exemptions apply. So you can get a sunshine lanyard. You can apply for it on the website or you can pick it up from a campus receptions area. The same place you'll pick up the lateral flow test kits. Just a little form to fill in, hand that back to reception and they'll give you a lanyard. Um, the Students Association is also helping us with this, so many thanks to them. So just to reiterate, exemptions apply, but we'd really like you to get lanyards. The reason we ask for lanyards is quite important because it's visible. We can see if you've got a lanyard on, you're not having to wear a mask. If you've not got a lanyard, 
there may be staff or students come up to you and say, can I ask you to wear a mask? So the stuff I explained previously. So if you've got an exemption, please apply for Sunshine Line Yard. Great, thanks again, Nick. Um, question from Claire. Is there a way to receive online learning if you have a positive COVID test and would this affect bursary payments if you are off because of that? It certainly will not affect bursary payments. Our intention is not to penalise anybody if they get COVID. We're there to support you and help you through that. And it shouldn't affect your online learning experience. I mean, if you're ill and you really can't access online learning, have a discussion with your teaching staff about that. But our intention is certainly not to penalise for bursaries. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, another question from uh, Leah. Are we able to come in and use the college libraries if we are not on campus students? Now, I feared this question was going to come up and I was trying to get all the library colleagues. If you, th there's a couple of schemes being run from libraries. So my understanding is currently, and I may get back to you about this further and we can put some information on the website, is that the library service is running um, our digital inclusion programme. So if you've not got access to internet or a laptop, you can come and pick those up from campuses and the library service is dealing with that. You can contact the library service via email and they can arrange for you to pick such stuff up from either libraries or reception areas. But one of the things we need to remember, Jack, is a lot of this guidance and arrangement is changing at the colleges. So we'll have an up-to-date um, position on library access and general campus, ac campus access going out pretty soon. Brilliant. Thank you. A uh, question from Shane. Uh, thanks for your question, Shane. Are you an induction for my course or for the whole college? Shane, this is just for the college. EC Welcome is your, your online induction to the college. Next week, you'll receive more information about your induction to your course. Um, and yeah, that'll be delivered from your lecturers. So look out for communication from your lecturing staff about how to access your course induction. Um, you can find details on your in your timetable email about your course start dates as well. Next question is from Jodie. When will we receive our student cards? You'll receive more information about those next week as well, Jodie. Um, student cards will be digital for the main this year. Where they'll be accessed through the MyEC app, which you, you can download on Android or App Store. If you do need a student card, if you're going to be on campus for like, access in specific areas of the college, speak to your lecturer and we'll sort that out for you. Next question, Nick. Um, how is the public transport situation in Edinburgh at the moment with COVID? Is it still easy to get back and forth to college using public transport? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't work for the bus company, but we do have an exceptional bus company in loading buses. And there are extensive services running across the city and the region. So we accept that from some parts of the region we serve, particularly Lothian and parts of Mid-Lothian, it's very difficult to get to some of our campuses. Um, so yes, public transport working well and we've got train stations and tram stations at some of our campuses as well. We do have some travel guidance which I'd really encourage all students to to read. That's available on the website um, and also available on the Students Association website who help us write the guidance. So a shout out to Students Association for that great work. We do try and encourage people to use sustainable travel options, cycling provisions really good at the college, buses, trams, trains, but we accept that some people have got to use cars. So if you need to use your car, that's fine. Um, parking restrictions on college campuses are not in play at the moment because we accept it's quite difficult. We don't want to add to the drama coming onto campus on a car. We know that some students share cars. We know that's inevitable. We just ask that you're very careful if you do that and maybe try and wear a mask when you're in the car and when you're out of the car um, tr try and social distance when you're in and around college and do all the things we've asked you to do before so I suppose in summary Jack there's a lot in the travel question so thanks for that check the guidance you'll have all the information there yep we'll pop the, the guidance on the EC Welcome website at the end of EC Welcome and it's on the end the college website as well next question Nick how often are the hand sanitizing stations refilled regularly. Um, we've got security staff and health and safety staff and the company that helps us with cleaning um, called ISS. All of those staff are checking whether these uh, hand washing stations are filled up and there are many around the campus including facilities obviously to wash your hands in, in, in the usual toilets across the campus. So very important point as well as masks and social distancing, hand sanitising is really important. So yeah, we check that all the time. OK, thanks Nick. Um, next question is, is parking available at the college and are, are there any fees for that? Parking is available at the college. 
no need to get a pass at the moment. We might have to look at that when we get busier, but at the moment, just come onto campus. I'd make the point again, if you can travel sustainably onto campus, please do so. If you need to use a car, plenty of parking space is available. And just to add to that, there is no fees. The permits are free. Just request one at reception when you arrive at campus that day. Um, just get down the iPad here. Lots of questions coming in, so thank you for those. Uh, next question, what is going to happen with placements this year? Again, sorry to defer this, but that's a discussion to be having with the electoral staff. It was an issue last year because a lot of employers were shutting down because of lockdown. So a lot of apprenticeships and placements were difficult to proceed with. Uh, this year we're in a better place, um, but again, that's a discussion to have with the electoral staff next week on your course induction. And I'm back to my point, please get online, please get on your class team site, please use Moodle. These are the ways that you will have successful communication with the election staff and give you the best chance to understand what's happening on campus and what's happening with your course, including things like placements. Brilliant, thank you, Nick. Um, the next question is around exams. Will they be normal or will they still be restricted in 21-22? It's difficult to say at the current point. Um, I, we, we get into prediction the future there, Jack, and what the state of the virus is going to be then. Um, we will keep you informed about any examination and assessment regimes through your course. And sorry to repeat this again, next week's going to be critical. You need to get in contact with the election staff and they'll be trying to get in contact with you because that's where you're going to have that discussion about exams and assessments and placements. So just to stress the importance of that next week. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, for students with learning disabilities who aren't good with online learning, is there plans to help them? Certainly. Again, had that discussion with the lecturer. We have a team of people in the college called Learning Development Tutors, and many of the staff working with students with learning disabilities across the college are really well trained in providing you the kind of support that you need. So please discuss with the lecturer and staff the kind of adjustments you might need to make sure you're getting either successful on campus learning and importantly online learning. Your relationship with the teaching staff is critical. So that's where that discussion starts. Thanks, Nick. And again, just to add to that, there is information on the EC Welcome site, welcome.enbercollege.ac.uk. If you scroll down to the foot of the home page, we've got a video from Catherine, our uh, learning support team leader. Uh, in there, it gives you information on how to access learning support and any other support that you might need at the college. So. Have a look at that when you get the chance. Uh, well, I need to wear a mask in the classroom. Yes, currently the government guidance, which we've just got this week, is encouraging us to adopt a very similar approach to schools. So when you come onto campus, you need to try and wear a mask at all times, unless you're eating or drinking. And it's the same rule for staff as it is for students. And it's back to my earlier points, Jack it just reduces the risk of transmission. It reduces the risk of you getting coronavirus and COVID, and it reduces the risk of you passing it on. Um, it's a critical bit of what we call uh, mitigating action to reduce the transmission of the virus. It's just as important as social distancing. So social distancing, wearing a mask at all times, and hand sanitizing. These are key things to remember when you come onto campus. Brilliant. Thank you, Nick. Um, if we test positive, if we test and we're positive, what should we do? OK, so just to remind everybody, there's two sorts of tests. There's the lateral flow test you do at home. And then that will give you an indication of whether you're positive or negative. If you're positive, you need to get what's known as a PCR test. You order that from the government website. It comes in the post, you return it, you get the results back in a couple of days. The PCR tests are a lot more accurate because they're analysed in a laboratory, whereas this stuff you do at home. If you test positive, you need to follow the self-isolation guidelines, which at the moment are 10 days, um, and access the usual health services. There's plenty of support, which not many people know about, um, for you and your families if you do test positive. There's financial support, there's mental wellbeing support, all of which is on the Scottish Government's website. Again, we can make that information available to you. Great, thank you, Nick. Um, the next question is around um, help for applying for laptops and devices for those who are on low incomes. We do have a, a digital support scheme in place at the college. Um, we'll pop the details of how to access that and who to email into the Q&A for you uh, at the end of this, so you can get the email address and give them details of your situation and what 
uh, support you might need. Thank you. Um, next question is back to parking again. Is there sufficient parking for students from far locations? I will be driving in from Lanark to, camp to campus and I'm in desperate need of parking. I think at the moment, because we're trying to reduce the numbers for all the reasons we've talked about today, you're probably not going to have problems parking. Um, we're looking at around about three and a half thousand students across four campuses in between when we start on the 6th for, for FE students and the 13th for HE students right through to October. So I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying there should be spaces on, on college car parking. After October, when we get into 2022, that might be a different issue. Um, so we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep giving information to students on, but at the moment, I think you're going to be OK. OK, thank you, Nick. And our last questions are around sunshine lanyards. So um, can it be any colour lanyard? Does it need to be sunflower? And if somebody has a sunflower lanyard from their work or from another place, can they use that in the college or does it have to be a college specific one? It doesn't have to be a college specific one. Um, if you've got a lanyard from another place, definitely where everybody recognises these now. So. Um, yeah, I'd encourage people again to, to access that lanyard scheme if you haven't already. If you've got one from a previous place, definitely that'll be valid. As well. Perfect, thank you. Nick. We've just got one um, one more question in that's just come in. Um, how many times should we do the self-testing, the lateral flow testing? So if you're on campus once or twice a week, which will be applicable for some students, the advice from us and the government is test twice a week. So you get seven kits in here, so that'll last you about three and a half weeks. You can pick as many of these up from reception as you want. There's no limit on it because they're free. So you can pick five or 10 or 15, however many you can carry. Um, we Again, we encourage you to test, but the guidance at the moment is twice a week if you come in onto campus. If you're not, you can still use them, but we, you know, you don't need to use them for the purposes of coming on a college campus. Great, thank you, Nick. OK, thank you to everyone for the questions. We hope this morning's session has been useful for you. A recording of the session will be available on our EC Welcome site, which again is welcome.enbacollege.ac.uk, so you can refer back to that at any time. Next up, you'll meet our Students Association, EXA. They'll be here at 11 o'clock, so bye for now. <laughs>